9 revelation chapter 5 verse 9 and this song a new song saying thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof for thou wast slain and has redeemed us to god by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and has made us unto our god kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth so kingship is one of the outstanding content of our redemption package one of the outstanding contents of our redemption world package we have been redeemed to rule and to reign by the blood of the lamb from every tongue from every kindred and nation that we might become and i mean symbols to the greatness of our god on the earth amen amen now steps to your enthronement steps to that kingship for that kingship to become a reality number one you must accept the lamb who was slain before the foundation of the earth as your personal lord and savior not just as your savior but as your lord many people have accepted jesus as their savior but they are struggling with the lordship of the master over their lives they don't submit their will to the will of the lord they do whatever they want to do not minding whether the lord is there but joseph i mean uh, david said i have set the lord always before me so the lord is not in whatever they are doing they are the rulers of their lives they control everything about them in fact they finish whatever they want to do and then bring god into it as if god is their servant and until jesus becomes the lord of your life then kingship shall be very far away from you you don't stumble on kingship you prepare for your kingship you don't pray and fast to step into kingship you observe the necessary rules and principles that will guide you to your throne in the name of jesus amen amen we see in revelation chapter 13 verse 6 to 9 talking about the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the earth so what do you do acknowledge and accept the lordship of jesus over your life acknowledge it and accept it know that there is no other power or force thank god for your earthly parent thank god for whoever you think you have but without the master without jesus in your life your life is empty pretension cannot help us forming cannot help us being a church boy or a church girl cannot help you quoting pentecostal jargons and whatever speaking the language of the church without jesus being the lord of your life is an effort in futility you are deceiving yourself hallelujah hallelujah as to the 4 verse 12 it says neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved no other name if you are not saved you are not saved there's nothing like it's like i'm saved if you are saved you'll be sure like we said on the uh, a Sunday during the leaders and workers meeting why do people you know create crisis for themselves when it comes to kingdom service because they are not saved and they are not sure of the salvation of their soul anybody who is saved and is sure of the salvation of his or her soul will be so happy to serve God without conditions attached to it but many come to church without being saved and it is dangerous it's dangerous hallelujah hallelujah now note this your helmet of salvation attracts the crown of your kingship what attracts the crown of your kingship as far as god is concerned is the helmet of your salvation what happens if you are not saved you are not born again you are still living in sin and secret sin uh -huh. pleading the blood every day and so thank god for the blood thank god for jesus thank god for mercy amen <laughs> amen but listen to me there is a way a particular child behaves in school and repeat the same class every day every year the same elementary two every year the same elementary six why because he or she does not take what he or she is doing seriously so the more you sing the more you remain where you are keep pleading for mercy keep pleading for repentance and so on no he will forgive you but god does not promote anyone who is not serious with his word 
the earlier you understand this, the better. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Now, step number two. Step to your kingship. Step number two. Head seen and embrace righteousness. It gets to a point in your life where you develop a strong hatred against sin in all form. Sin in all forms. Sin in all categories. You just hate it. Amen. You detest it. If you celebrate sin, then you won't be a kingdom celebrity. Anyone who celebrates sin can never be a kingdom celebrity. Check it out. Check it out. Anyone who celebrates sin will never be a kingdom celebrity. You don't bribe God for your lifting. You please him for your lifting. You don't bribe God for your lifting. You please him for your lifting. And how do you please him? By living a holy and righteous life. You don't pay for it. You don't bribe God for your lifting. What do you do for your lifting? You please him for your lifting. How do you please him? Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Whatever he says, don't do. Stop it. And how do you know what he tells you to do and what he does not tell you to do? It is here in the constitution. Whatever you want to know about how to please God is in the Bible. And that's why if you read and you don't understand, you come to church and then we read and interpret it to you. Nobody has any excuse. I pray that we will wake up unto righteousness and trust God for our lifting. We will not behave like the prophets of Baal who always go for sacrifice, who all go for assignment and so on and so forth. Assignment cannot lift you. The only thing that lifts you is what? Righteousness. Psalm 45 from verse 7 to 8. It says, Thou lovest righteousness, thou lovest righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God thy God. Who? God. No man. God might use a man to guarantee your lifting. But not that man. Except God touches a man, he won't play the role that he, is, he expected to play for your lifting. Are you following? Are you following? Are you following? Don't come to church clean. Don't step into church and receive salvation. And because of one link or the other relationship with, your, with one person or the other in church you become a, a devilish sinner you drop the helmet of your salvation you drop your robe of salvation and begin to live anyhow <laughs> anyone who lives anyhow any child of God who lives anyhow will end anyhow any child of God who lives anyhow will end out anyhow for God is not a respecter of persons I pray that God will help somebody now to retrieve his step, her step back to how he or she started. <coughs> Amen. Say, therefore God, thy God had anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Uh, what does that mean? When righteousness is in place, joy, overwhelming joy takes over. The oil of joy, the oil of gladness. Like I said on Sunday during the leaders, I said, you get to a point where you step so much on the toes of Jehovah that crisis becomes the order of your life. Crisis you cannot understand. And I still remember what I said. I said, there is no prayer that can deliver such a person. There is no counsel that can deliver such a person because he has met himself or herself an apostate of hell, a direct enemy of God in the house of God by reason of his lifestyle and her lifestyle. Check out in your Bible. Do you see want to be enthroned? Yeah. Eh? About thy fellows. And thy, is it, and thy garments smell of myrrh and aloes and cassia out of the ivory palaces whereby they have made thee glad. King's daughters were among thy honorable women. Upon thy right hand did stand the queen in gold of Ephah. Have you seen what righteousness does? It attracts you to kingship and attracts kingship to you. You don't just know. Righteousness is like a very powerful magnetic pull. <coughs> Sorry. And force or field that repels what needs to be repelled and attracts what needs to be attracted. It doesn't matter what you are going through. Go live in righteousness. Live a life that pleases God. 
more in the secret than in the open. Don't be a child of God in the open and then you know, you know, you know, trample upon the blood of the covenant, trample upon the grace, trample upon the blood with which you were saved in the secret. By so doing, you are you are you are you are you are crucif you are crucifying Jesus the second time. You are making mockery of the blood. You are making mockery of the grace of God upon your life. Don't you have conscience? Does your conscience not tell you when you are living the other way outside God's own way? But you have tried to kill your conscience. And God said, without thy mind, I can do nothing. Your conscience is not far from your mind. It's not far from your heart. God sees us in the secret. He sees us in the open. How do you live in the secret? Amen. Remember, you don't bribe God for your lifting. What do you do? You please him for your lifting. Let your life be a kind of life that pleases God at all times. Amen. 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 I believe somebody does not need the lifting again. Eh? You see, need it. Uh, since you can't get it by assignment, leave anyhow you like. That is fallacy. It is fallacious. It is wickedness. Leave anyhow you like. It is not God. Because God cannot break his covenant. God will not alter his word. God himself is the law. So he does everything in line with the demands of his law in principles. And in practice, are you there? Tell somebody, come back. Come back, come back, come back, come back. Come back. The deception is too much. Deception is too much. Now look at this. Under righteousness, point number, uh, head sin and embrace righteousness. Point number A. Righteousness enhances your steady lifting. Proverbs 14, 34 says, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin brings what? A reproach. Listen, it does not matter how sin is garnished. It does not matter the color you give to sin. The end result of sin is what? Shame. Reproach. Disgrace. And when these three things are in place, it does not matter where you were, your detronment becomes imminent. When shame, reproach, and disgrace surround you, it does not matter the level you are. Your detronment becomes a reality. Why? Because righteousness is the ladder that guarantees your steady rising. But sin brings what? Reproach, shame, and disgrace. And listen to me. Your garment can cover your shame. Your attire might cover your disgrace. But the result of shame and disgrace cannot be covered by any garment or perfume. Amen. Are you still here? Are you still here? Number two, righteousness supplies the necessary supernatural vitamins for your flourishing. Righteousness supplies the necessary supernatural vitamins for your what? Flourishing. Who does not want to flourish? Who wants to remain dry from year to year? Who wants to remain stagnated in the world? No new revelation of the world. No reign of the spirit. No reign of righteousness. Dryness everywhere. Nobody has anything to do with a dry tree. The only thing you can dry, do with a dry tree is to use it as fire, wood. Fire, wood. Fire, wood. Fire, wood. So when you talk about enthronement, you are talking about a dimension of flourishing that comes supernaturally. Wherever you are, you flourish. The Bible talking about Isaac, he said, in the same land where people were crying because of hunger and famine and drought, hunger, famine and drought, what happened? He sowed in the same land and flourished and received what? A hundredfold harvest. Genesis chapter 26 from verse 1 to verse 12. Amen. 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 Thank God for your labor. Thank God for the people you know. Thank God for your connection. Thank God for your ability to work hard. 
hard work is good but until the flavor that is called favor from the lord comes upon your hard work i've seen people who work hard and die at their hard working with their hard working without any results so what do you do righteousness is to be embraced sin is to be hated at all time and at all fronts if we want to ascend this throne amen 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 listen to this you don't sacrifice righteous living on the altar of prayer sit and pray agents of satan they fast more than you do some of them they fast inside the pit with snakes and reptiles some of them go to the forest and spend seven nights and seven what seven days inside a coffin no food no water so you don't sacrifice righteous living on the altar of what fasting live right and fast and pray and the result shall be evident are you hearing me are you hearing me satan also fast agents of satan they fast more than we do so you don't sacrifice righteous living on the altar of what fasting and prayer you end up deceiving yourself and go remain god it does not matter what you will say at the end of it all wake up unto righteousness for there is no time again amen 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 psalm 92 verse 12 he said the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree amen they shall see bring forth fruits even at old age number point number what now number three under you know hating of a sin and embracing righteousness righteousness is the foundation for your promotion from high to height from high to height you don't get promoted and be stagnated the part of the just as a shining light is as a shining light that shined more and more unto a perfect day amen amen don't be lifted today and tomorrow you land crash no that is not god whatever god does is permanent it's always from glory to glory from grace to grace but what is the force that will generate this constant flourishing constant lifting is what righteousness righteousness not being righteous at heart but being righteous at heart and showing the righteousness in practical form which is called what holiness righteousness in practical form is called what holiness the one in your heart nobody sees let your light so shine that men might see your good works and glorify your father who is in heaven wanted 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 there are vacancies everywhere for god fearing men and women in the midst of people who don't fear god sinners are looking for righteous people who will handle important positions for them because of this for the sake of what trust and reliability they are tired of the people they are they are tired of the people around them they are looking for, like king nebuchadnezzar who was an idolater but he was looking for people whom he can rely on people who can say the truth people who can live a righteous life in a strange land of idolatry praise god praise god so friends please it is time to wake up let's stop deceiving ourselves pray and fasting in my arm please amen amen remember that god cannot be mocked whatever you sow is what you reap galatians 6 7 he that soweth to righteousness shall live life everlasting he that soweth to the carnal nature what does that mean he who lives according to the desires of the flesh to please the human carnal nature he shall also reap what corruption he shall be pregnant but barefoot what win what do you mean by being pregnant with great expectation great ideas but the result is what win you can't see any tangible result why he chooses to please the flesh he tends towards the demands of the flesh and make sure that at all costs he gives to the flesh what the flesh needed and the kind of nature can never be satisfied church wake up so that we will not end up tomorrow to accuse god accuse this altar and accuse the grace of god operational here 
God cannot be bride for our lifting, but we can only place him for our what? Please, let's sink into our heart. <laughs> 